Cynthia Byrick. Passed away. Special value put a lot of work in getting everything uh, logistically prepped for our celebration uh, this afternoon. And we are excited about this baptismal service of CC and Stephanie. Um, you know, COVID might have pushed it off, but it wasn't going to cancel what the Lord's doing here. So we're thankful uh, that we're able uh, to do this this afternoon. We're thankful for both of you uh, guys as professions in faith of, of faith in Christ. Uh, thankful for the growth that um, God has, uh, you know, done in, in their lives. We're able to celebrate um, the marriage last year. This Lord is doing great things to your lives, and we're thankful to be a part of that. And uh, now we're excited that you're both about to be baptized. But before we uh, start with uh, your testimonies and the baptismal service, I want to quickly talk about uh, why is baptism such a big deal? You know, why is it a cause to celebrate? And I'll give us, you know, three reasons. One, it's an important step of obedience, listen, for all believers. An important step of obedience for all believers. And we see this all over the New Testament. The first step after one's salvation in Christ is that they get baptized. Jesus in Matthew 28, the Great Commission passage, you guys know that passage, right? Part of the Great Commission mandate, part of the command that he gives in making disciples is Matthew 28. I read uh, some of it here. He says, all authority in heaven, Jesus says this, and on earth has been given me. Go therefore make disciples of all nations. And what does that include? Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the earth. And one of our core values is discipleship, and a part of that discipleship process is baptism. And many first, like Pastor Wade said, is a big part of the first century church uh, baptism, and should, should still should be a part of our, uh, our church these days as well. But pretty soon after someone put their faith in Christ, you see they were baptized pretty quickly. Acts 2.41, after the sermon uh, at Pentecost, right? They accepted his message. That means they believed in Christ, the Messiah, and then that they were baptized. And it says about 3,000 were added to their, to their number that day. Talk about part of the, that local church body there, that church. And then Acts 16, you know, Philippian jail in their house, we see, and they replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved in your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to them, and to all the others in the house. And at the hour of the, uh, of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. And immediately he and all his household were baptized. And, and there's plenty and a plethora of other examples of we've seen baptism happen right after a person trusts Christ. And uh, one thing this teaches us, that important step of obedience and being a child of God is to be baptized. And we celebrate this act of obedience of Cece and Stephanie this afternoon. But a couple other things, more importantly than obedience, baptism, now, uh, baptism is a big deal and a cause to celebrate because of really what it represents, all right, the symbol that it represents. And we see that it is a physical, external symbol of an inward gospel reality, right? Baptism is an external symbol of, of a gospel-saving transaction that happens on the inside, that is real, right? Baptism, the uh, the scriptures teach us actually is a symbol of the literal. This is not like the spiritual talk. This is not the symbolism. No, it's a symbol of the literal union believers have with Christ's death and resurrection. This is real. This is uh, uh, literal. We see in Romans 6. And Paul throughout that passage makes it very clear that I don't want you to try to spiritualize this or symbolize this. This is real. You need to reckon it. Let's look at uh, some of that here. Romans 6. Um, verses uh, starting with verse three it says, "Do you do you not know that all of us who have been watch this baptized into Jesus were baptized into this death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For we have been." United with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this. So we see that that picture of baptism here being a picture of a real reality, a real union reality of being buried with Christ's death, united in his burial of death. We are we're completely dead to our old sinful nature because of what Christ has done. 
It's like he died, he died to our sin. We are buried with him into death, but then raised in newness of life. And if you're a believer, you put your faith in Christ, you were literally united with Christ into, uh, uh, into his death and resurrection. And this is a beautiful picture of what that demonstrates. Um, so we know baptism does not save anyone, right? Titus tells us not of works of righteousness which we have done, right? Uh, if we, everybody knows what Paul talks about in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by, for by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. So let, Paul says again, what, what, uh, Galatians 2, 16. Yet we know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So baptism doesn't save us, right? And it's sad that sometimes, you know, I hear, you know, sometimes throughout this community, but sometimes at work and, and things of that nature, and people are really excited maybe about them getting baptized and their child getting baptized and things of that nature. And you start talking to them and you realize they don't even know what salvation is. They don't even know what putting their faith in Christ is. And it's sad. Um, and as, as one evangelist says, in a, in a funny way, but it's sober reality, that if you don't put your faith in Christ and you get baptized, you ain't nothing but a wet sinner, right? We need, baptism is a symbol of a real gospel reality that happens on the inside. So that is why baptism is exciting and celebratory, not because it saved you or a part of your salvation, because it's a public symbol of your real, genuine, saving faith in Christ. So let me ask you, have you done that? Everybody in this room, whether you're, you're, you're 60 or you're 60 or you're 6, right? Whatever the spectrum is, have you put your faith in Christ? Has there been a time in your life when you recognize, man, I'm lost, I'm spiritually starving, as we was preached this morning, and you realize that you need to put your faith completely in Christ? Guess what? When you do that, Jesus immediately saves you. You are united with him in his death and raised to new life through his resurrection. And we were celebrating a picture of that today. But, but lastly, here, it's a public declaration that one is part of the family of God. Baptism is primary a symbol. We talked about that, but symbol to who? It's a symbol to the believing community that you're part of the family of God. Think about marriage rings, right? And I have a marriage ring, and it's a symbol of my wife and I's marriage covenant, right? Um, nobody would ever say that this, this ring makes me married, all right? If I didn't have it on, I'm not married anymore, but no. Uh, it's a symbol to everybody that I'm taking. I got a girl forever, and I love her to death, and this is the symbol right here. So um, I'm a taken man. I'm happily taken, right? And baptism is a public symbol to the, to the world, but to your church family, that you are part of that gospel family. We know in Ephesians 2 that God, Jesus reconciles us to God and to each other. We are regenerated. We are justified. We are redeemed. But we're also, listen, we are adopted into the family of God. And baptism is a public display of that gospel reality. The reason this baptism that we're having is such a great event, worthy to be celebrated, is not because of the act itself saves but because of the gospel reality it represents, right? This act of obedience is a public symbol of our union with Christ and the fact that the, the person, Cece and Stephanie, are part of the family of God. So let us rejoice today in um, this baptismal service and all the gospel realities that it represents. So I'll stop talking, God, I'll keep on preaching here, and I'll transition to the testimonies. And we're going to have our testimony, um, have Cece and Stephanie give a testimony of their salvation and the Lord's work on their heart. Um, so I'll have uh, Cece uh, stand up first and turn around and give a testimony of, uh, it's the first time I'm telling them, that's going to be a faith in Christ. Well, first and foremost, good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs>
against all against all that lifted up and it shall be brought low. Y'all excuse me, it's, it's been in my eyes, but, but thank the Lord for that. Uh, but uh, what I would like to say, uh, uh, as a child growing up, it was, it was always instilled to me. Uh, I never missed a Sunday in church. Uh, thank my mother for that uh, and being taught about God. But uh, it came a time in my life when it was time for me to leave home. And uh, it was time for me to make choices of my own. And so to speak, I took a route somewhat like Adam and Eve. I wanted to take my fruit. So therefore, I, uh, I was the head of my own life. I did, I made my own decisions. Couldn't nobody tell me anything. Uh, this is my life. And I can do whatever I want in my life, whatever I want in my life. And, and that's, that's the path that I chose. And I'm just so thankful for that, for that passage because uh, in time, uh, me being the head of my life and the Lord allowing me to be and be the head of my life, guess what allowed, allowed me to head myself, to allow me to lead myself right into prison? And, uh, you know, I, ladies and gentlemen, I know you can probably imagine the old prison, you know, things like that, but it, it saved my life. And the reason for that is because he put me in a place where I couldn't point a finger at anyone. I had to sit in my own mess. For once in my life, I had to realize how filthy my rags were. I had to look at myself for who I really was. I had to look at the path that I took and the man that I became. And it made me sick to my stuff. And I was there waddling, and I was there waddling. I started shedding tears. This is real, you know. I had a miraculous, I had an amazing, you know, it's, it's, words cannot describe what I experienced on that day. He revealed things to me that I'll never reveal as a child when I used to go to church. And he, he allowed me to realize that the problem was me. All this time, I was putting victory in myself when I should have acknowledged that it's victory in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, when I was walking in my own mess and seeing how horrible of a person I was, seeing how filthy I rags, my rags was, I couldn't call my mother, I couldn't get in touch with nobody. And me being under the dark cloud that I was in, I didn't realize the whole time this was a plan. I was chosen, and I, you do not know how that makes me feel. Look on me, out of billions and billions of people, I was chosen that day in that penitentiary. I was chosen to see God's work and to realize that the person that was in the way was me. And as soon as I got out of the way and I allowed him to work in my life, he allowed me to see the difference then and there. I seen who I was before I went to prison, and he showed me who the new person I was when I left prison. And when I left prison, I look back on the night and, oh my God, it is amazing. It is the beautifulest thing that I've ever seen in my life. Y'all are looking at a man that if you seen me, you knew it was a gun on me. If you seen me, you knew it was cracks on me. I worship money. That's what I love. And God showed me a new way. Amen. In that penitentiary, he showed me a new way to live. I got a wife now. I got a beautiful family. And it ain't nothing about me. I'm filthy rags. The Lord around that to happen in my life. And I'm just thankful for that. He took me to a low point. And, and that right there, that could have meant death. But he had me in a place to give me patience. I had no choice but to have patience. What God had, what the devil had to destroy me, the Lord had a plan. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it is victory in who? Jesus. In Jesus Christ. Amen. 
And that's the, a lot of times that's the problem. We need to move out the way. Because we hurt ourselves, our flesh, our sinful nature. Give it back to God. Let God take the will. Let God have control. Amen. 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 Stephanie, uh, pass away or just uh, Byron, I'll help you. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of 
challenge of getting this warm. So thanks for fire and being patient. It's almost an ice bath. So. <laughs> You want to sit in there for a while there? <laughs> um, so we just heard. Yes. Oh, yeah, I'll yeah. get the end. Hey, I'm going to hit your head. That would be good. Yeah. Um, but we've heard uh, Stephanie's uh, profession of faith, and you can put one hand on the nose there. And upon your profession of faith that you publicly demonstrated, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Amen. 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 Got it. All right, here, welcome to the child. We can just sit there and wait for uh Amen. All right. Yes. Yeah. You see. All right. You got it? Alright, I'll try to catch it. Alright. We got more bubble action in there. Just like the Jordan River. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, see if you can get a board because you're a little tall, I don't need to hit your head. That would not be good. Uh, stay there. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, we've heard this profession of faith, and I uh, see you want to put your, your hand on your nose and you don't, you know, take up too much water there. Yes, uh, but upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his death. 